Thank you, Almighty God. We honor you. We bless your holy name for your faithfulness and your goodness, Jehovah God, this afternoon. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for being there for us, oh God. We thank you for dying on the cross, Lord Jesus, for our sins, oh God, that you may set us free, that it is in you, Christ Jesus, that we have the freedom. We thank you, Jehovah Father, that we will not again be burdened by the yoke of slavery. We bless you and we worship your holy name, even as we listen to your word, as we share your word, as we break the bread of life. May you minister to our hearts, all to the glory and honor of your holy name. May we, may we be attentive, O Jehovah God even as you minister to us. We thank you and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen and amen. Praise Jesus. We want to glorify God this afternoon for his favor, his love, um, the opportunity to be here to listen from him. Our guiding scripture is from the book of Luke, chapter 23, Verse 26, and it says, As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon of Cyrene, who was on his way from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. This being our guiding scripture, our topic is you cannot do it alone. You cannot do it alone. We want to thank God for the opportunity of um, interacting with the Word of God and getting to interact also with the, with the Holy Spirit, getting to interact with God in prayer, that we get understanding, we get direction, we get um, wisdom on how God would want us to go about issues and things that we run here on earth, that Today he is reminding us that you cannot do it alone. You can't. You can't. Someone said, when you are coming to this world, you need people. And as you exit this world, you will need people. And that is very true. That is very true. Someone had to carry you in their womb. For you to be here, someone attended to you when you were young. We thank God for these opportunities. And even as we exit, we have even um, people that we honor very much, the mortuary attendants, the morgue attendants. They preserve the bodies. We have uh, 
um, the undertakers who dig the graves. We have those who cremate. We have all these people. So we need people. We need assistance one way or the other. And it is, it is good that we understand that in this world, it is not a one-man show. And someone who clearly showed us this was Jesus Christ. He was on a mission, a mission to save the whole world from the bondage of sin, to set us free from the bondage of sin, from the yoke of slavery. But even as he was going to Golgotha, he got tired. And the Roman soldiers saw it. And truly, they noticed that he needed assistance. And so today we are looking at, we cannot do it alone. You cannot do it alone. And the minute you understand that it is okay to be assisted, it is okay to be helped, there are so many things that we are going to drop off. There are so many things that we are going to delegate. There are so many responsibilities you are going to delegate to the people who need to come on board and assistance. And above all, to understand that the creator of the universe is always waiting to come and assist us to the glory and honor of his holy name. So in our sermon, we are going to look at it in two parts. I'm just going to give a brief introduction of Simon and Cy of Cyril. And then we go and indulge in the main uh, part where we are going to look at um, the assistance that Jesus got. So we hear of this man called Simon of Cyrene. He was um, from Cyrene, yes. And the Bible says that uh, he had just come back from the country. Probably he was a bystander uh, out of curiosity, just looking at what was happening, you know. And uh, lo and behold, it was Jesus. Uh, being um, taken to Golgotha. We are not told if he was sympathetic or not, but all we know is that the soldiers forced him to carry the cross. An interesting way of meeting Jesus. An interesting way of meeting the Son of God. This man from Cyrene, we, the scholars have it, that he was a father of two, Rufus and Alexander. Um, and uh, we, we are not told much about him, but all we know is that he encountered Jesus in a very uh, interesting manner, that he was just uh, coming from uh, his home country. Uh, here we can talk about uh, Ushago, you know, Mkumeenda Kutembea, or he had gone to visit someone. And then you just see just what happens normally along our streets. Um, something is happening, a, a crowd is pulling, you want to go and see Kwani, what is happening, you know. And all of a sudden, here is an authority, a man of authority, a Roman soldier, pulls him and tells him, come and help this man. So it was a very interesting way of meeting Jesus. Just as, at, well, as we are here, how did you meet Jesus? How did you first hear about Jesus? How did you come to know Jesus? How did you interact with Jesus? How did you meet Jesus? So we see someone as Cyrene meeting Jesus um, in a manner that was quite interesting. And uh, it is it is awesome to meet Jesus because whenever we meet Jesus, our lives are never the same again. Simon's name, just because he never refuted, he never argued with the soldier, he never said he won't do it till today. Thousands and thousands of years later, we are reading and talking about him. In our history, in this history of Jesus, Simon's name is in the world. It is in that history. And I want to thank God because Jesus 
irrespective of how you meet him, whenever you meet our Lord Jesus, your life will never be the same again. The experience you have with Jesus can never be compared to any other experience ever. The Bible is so clear that his name is, is mentioned over and over again. He is the one who partook in the blessing of assisting the Son of Man in the mission that he was on of saving human mankind. So doing God's work is never in vain, whether we fully understand it or maybe it's uncomfortable, the reward is great. So many are the times that we are called upon to, um, to help. We have the capacity to do it, but we don't. It's high time we stepped, uh, stop being selfish and did it. God will not give you burdens you can carry. He has provided for us. Uh, so that he can use what he has given to us to bless others. So Simon had what? What did Simon have? He had life, he had energy, and he was present. Hallelujah. So he was present. He had life. He had the energy. And because of this, the Lord's time in the calendar, in the timings that there were, he was used in this great ministry. The Lord is calling us to ministry. There are burdens that by meeting Jesus, having come to Christ, having known Lord, our Lord Jesus, having accepted him as our Lord and Savior, we will, he will um, uh, give us um, responsibilities. All we need to do is just accept the responsibility because his grace is sufficient. So what do you have? What do you have that you are given by the Lord? Is it your time? Is it your finances? Your energy? Your wisdom? Share. Give it. Pray. You have the ability, the energy to pray. So people have fear that um, sometimes we have fear. That's why we do not assist other people or we don't take up the the work the Lord is giving unto us or the work that comes by being a Christian or a child of God, but do not fear. Yeah. Others, it is pride. You just feel you just don't need to do that for someone. Someone could have said, I can't do it. I won't do it. Why me? Call other people. But when we can see the humility in him, the one he honors, even the authority that is there. He might have feared, maybe they'll say, hey, maybe it was bad, or that is the norm. You know, that is maybe what was happening. Um, I, yeah, we need to check more about that. But he only you know we don't see antagonism. We don't see him um, resisting. So we need to embrace what the Lord has given unto us. And today we are honored to have Pastor Grace Kikuvi having accepted to carry this burden of rebuilding broken walls ministry. She being the founder, she didn't keep this to herself. God gave her the burden. God has given her the burden to carry this as the Lord gives her the grace. She has allowed herself to create an, a, a platform where the broken walls can be rebuilt. So we want to thank God for her. We want to appreciate her. She didn't say, oh, you know, I'm a mother. Oh, do you know this? Oh, my timing. No, she didn't say so many things. She has accepted. Of course, sometimes it comes with a prize. Your time. You become vulnerable. You have to give it your all. Your energy, your finances. But the amazing thing is, the reward is great. The reward is great for the children of God. Are you then? God has given you a ministry, a calling. He's calling you to assist in the ministry. He's calling you to assist in fathering the kingdom business. And you're quietly laying back, 
because of either fear of pride, today the Lord is saying, come. My grace is sufficient. So we thank God. We appreciate God for the ministry of Simon the Siren and Simon of Siren. And we bless the Lord and we desire, may the Lord give us the grace. If you are a Simon out there, accept the call of Jesus. Accept the, uh, what the Lord is, um, is requesting you to do, the responsibilities he's giving you. We thank God for his anointing that will, is upon us. Because he has equipped us, let's accept the calling. Number two, the part, the second part of this is um, looking and indulging into this, that you cannot do it alone. Looking at Jesus, allowing himself to be vulnerable to the level whereby the soldiers could see, the people who were mocking him could see that he could not carry this cross anymore. He was tired. He was tired. He allowed himself to be seen as tired. It's an amazing, amazing thing. It's an amazing encouragement to us in the body of Christ that sometimes even as we are doing, we are on the mission to serve God. We are doing what we are doing. We will get tired and it is okay. My brother, my sister, it is okay to be assisted. It is okay. So that the bigger goal can be achieved. The goal that is set to achieve can be achieved, can be reached. And not only just uh, half-heartedly or haphazardly, it should be reached as it is in the will of God. Lord, our Lord Jesus could have just reached a place and said, okay, kill me from here. Let me just die from here. But no, it was written. It was supposed to be that he had to go up to Golgotha so that he could fulfill what the Lord had intended for mankind. So that he could carry all our sins on the cross. Oh Lord Jesus, we love you. Jesus had the power to say no. He had the power to come to call the heavenly army. You know, he, he had the power to, to just change and, and just uh, um, um, embrace another form of power. He had the energy. He, had the, he could do anything. He is the creator of the world. He could have even made that, that cross light and just as, uh, ran to, the, to Golgotha. But he needed to show us this dimension of the kingdom. That it is okay. He needed to show us that sometimes we get tired. Sometimes we need to be assisted. Our God in heaven, his father was watching and would have sent an army to come and rescue his son. But the Lord wanted us to see, even as he was going to die on the cross, even as he was departing out from the, um, um, in the form of flesh, he needed to show us that there's a level of humility that we need to embrace of where we can be assisted. Everything Jesus was doing was a lesson to be taught um, to us about the kingdom of God. So as his kingdom came, as he was bringing the kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We needed to understand this kingdom does not operate like the kingdoms of the world. Where everybody is always strong, where everybody is always the superhero, where everybody is doing everything without having any blemish. Jesus needed to bring this dimension that we cannot do it on our own. We thank God for Pastor Grace. Even as she's doing this ministry, you take a close look. She's not doing it alone. 
by God's wisdom, she's able to appoint others over um, the finances, others over the, 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 the missions, you know, others over the IT project. Everything has its own way. The people to come and minister has is to remain as the vision carrier. Yes, to carry this burden. To make sure people understand the vision that God has, that he's rebuilding the broken walls. And so ours is to come in and support. You cannot do it on your own, my sister. You cannot do it on your own. In Genesis 1, 26 to 28, the Bible is very clear that Jesus, God said while he was creating, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the living things that move on earth. God looked um, looked at everything he had made and he found it very good. Oh, hallelujah. So here he is. He's creating the world. He's creating the earth. And he's saying, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. So he's not saying, let me make. He's saying, let us make man in our own likeness. So there's the likeness we need to assume. We need to embrace. The likeness of God is not just a one-man show. In as much as he's saying that man was to have dominion of a fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth, God is very particular. He's not doing it alone. And so who are we to just do it alone? Sometimes I feel we get tired, fed up of ministry because we are doing it on our own, because we want to prove a point. You want to show you can do it. My sister, my brother, you cannot do it on your own. You cannot do it on your own. It's only by God's grace. It's only by his strength that he himself comes. He himself sends people. He himself sends an army. And others even come on board to say, can we assist? When we allow God to use us in the way he desires, that is even in bringing people to support us, we will look back and see that it was good, both in our eyes, and in, the, in God's eyes and his name will be glorified amen he made everything he had he looked at everything he had made and found that it is very good so whatever we are given the responsibility we have if we allow the wisdom if we allow the wisdom of God to reign if we allow the Lord's Spirit, the Holy Spirit himself to walk with us and guide us. We will look at, we look back and see whatever we have been doing and we will be grateful when we accomplish that work and say that it is good. And part of it being good is allowing others. It's allowing not you, you know, it's allowing yourself not to be selfish to the point of you don't need help. To, to the point at which you say that I don't need help in your mind. It's a time we need to allow God to bring an army. The Bible says that we are different parts of one body. We are different parts of one body, the body of Christ. The body of Christ has different parts. And no part is superior than the other. There's no part that is superior than the other. Everybody needs, the, you know, like if you look at our, 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 our physical being, the eye cannot say you are more, more important than the ear. Because if the eye is not there, so the ear, how will the body see? How will it even get directed to where it's supposed to be hearing something? So the ear cannot say, I don't need the eye. The eye cannot say, I don't need the mouth. Because the mouth brings in an opening that we get to eat and get strength for this body get to talk. You know, so many things happen. You can't say you cannot need, you don't need someone. You don't need other people, no. 
help is inevitable so let us look at um, two 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 ways that the lord's um lord uses to bless us and to bring help to us and uh, we can get assistance one from the lord himself and also god in his own wisdom allows other people to come on board so there are times he himself will minister to us and there are times that he will send other people or send um help for you directly and physically so we cannot say we we just don't need help now number one we need to know understand is that god will help us if we allow him if you do not allow him to help you then he will leave you he does not force himself into our lives no he himself allows us uh to make choices and in these choices you either choose life jesus said or you choose death but choose life it's nourishing while we are still on earth it's nourishing to to get refreshed by not being so overburdened by things that god doesn't want you to be burdened with so for um for number 1 we want to look at what the word of god says in the book of philippians 4:6 do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to god so you have a responsibility you have a responsibility today who are you requesting who are you presenting your petition to who who are you asking help from The Bible is very clear in Philippians 4:6 that we should request God. We should present every situation, but take it to the Lord in prayer and petition and thanksgiving. Present it to God. New Living Translation says, "Do not worry about anything, instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done hallelujah now we look at a perfect example of someone who really went to god to ask for help and this is our lord jesus christ himself our lord jesus he himself went to the lord in prayer in mount olives so he is about to be crucified many are the times that we know when danger is coming there's that that feeling that you get and you can tell oh my god things are not good and so what happens in the book of luke 22:41 to 43 and he withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them where he knelt down and prayed these are from the disciples remember he's telling them guys let us pray so that we don't fall into temptation pray that you don't fall into temptation But Jesus himself wasn't saying what he wasn't doing. So he takes some steps away again and he goes and kneels down and starts praying. And what does he tell his father? He presents his request to God. Father, if you are willing to take this cup from me, yet no my will, but yours be done. Sometimes our desire or our will or what we want is our way. but it's not always important to seek it is always important to seek god's will for our life don't be afraid don't be scared he is with us he is with you so here jesus is terrified he is anxious maybe he knows something but even in all this he does not allow worry to overtake him what does he do he presents this worry he presents his fears he presents his vulnerability he presents his everything to god and tell him you know something uh if it is your will take this cup from me 
take this cup of suffering from me, take it from away from me. But he's very cautious. He's very cautious to say that not my will, but yours be done. Some of us have a burden. God has given you the burden for orphans. Some of us, God has given you hospital ministry. You have a burden to pray for your company. You have a burden to empower people. You have a burden to, to push the kingdom business. You have a burden to minister in the marketplace. It's the high time that you sought the will of God. And instead of telling him, God, remove this burden for me. Tell him, what is your will, Father? It becomes easier when you know if it is this way or that way. If it is the will of God, his grace is sufficient. If it is not his will, he's going to take it away from you. And he's going to give you direction. But many of the times we will first run to our friends, run to our parents, run to people, run to other human beings and ask, is this the will of God? But we look at Jesus. He's not even sharing his fears with his disciples. He's running to Jesus, he, to, to his father in heaven. If there's something that Lord, that our Lord God has taught me is that any time I have those challenges, every time I have those painful times, that I know there are some that the Lord needs me to just talk to him. I cannot talk to people about because they will not be able to assist because they are also limited. If there is any assistance that will come from men, God himself sends me. He sends me who is to support in such an area. Then an angel of the Lord in verse 43 came down and appeared to him and strengthened him. So it is not it was not the will of God for Christ not to go to the cross. He needed to do this. As Galatians chapter 5 uh, verse 1 says, um, Galatians uh, chapter 5 verse 1 says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So Jesus was coming to set us free. So this was the bigger picture. This was the bigger good. This was the, the thing. This is the goal that needed to be achieved. This is the mark that he needed to reach. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves again be burdened by the yoke of slavery. So Jesus, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So he needed to go to the cross and to set human beings free. And so what did God do? He never took that cup from him. He strengthened him. He sent an angel. He didn't send, in this case, he didn't send human being. He sent an angel. An angel. We can see other places where Jesus' provision is of the donkey. We can see where he's sending his disciples to go look for money from um, uh, to be able to pay tax from fish. There are so many things. There are so many ways God operates. God doesn't operate it just in one way. So you cannot say all the time, oh, God, send me an angel to strengthen me. It's yours to petition the heavens. It's for you to present your request to God. And he, in his own wisdom, in his own, um, uh, yes, in his wisdom, he will know what you need. And what a nice feeling when my father in heaven knows what I need. He gives me what I need, not what I want. Jesus, Lord, we bless your name. We worship you. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus, for your love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. We worship you, Lord. Let us pray and seek the Lord's direction. He's a faithful God. In the Old Testament, in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 7, verse um, 8, 1 so Kings 19, 7 to 8. 1 Kings 19, 7 to 8. We see Elijah also is in a predicament and he is in a battle. We are having this issue with Jezebel, Ahab, Elijah, the servant of God, has decided to honor God. But in, in serving him, in honoring God, there's challenges that come on board that Jezebel wants to kill him. And he is running away. 
He's having issues with Jezebel. He's having issues and, and, and he feels like at one point he wants to die. He is wondering what, what is happening. But the amazing thing about Elijah is that he still had something that we are insisting today, that it is good to have our conversations with our God. Have your conversation. It is the high time that in these new times that we are in, or in the times we are in, you make it your business to have a conversation with God. Tell him your fears. Tell him, Lord Jesus, this is what I'm going through. What do I do? Where do I start? You know, what are your fears today? What are your fears today? Present them to, lo to the Lord, our oh God. So we see um, in, in 1 Kings chapter 19, I will start from verse 1. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with a sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah say, to say, may the, God, may the gods, small g, deal with me. Be it ever so severely if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of them. So it's, Jezebel is very angry on how Elijah had dealt with the gods, you know, all the prophets of uh, Baal, Baal prophets. So he's very upset. She's very upset. And so in verse 3 it says, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. Imagine, if someone tells you, I'm coming for your head today, what will happen? I am coming for your head. You did this, I'm coming for your head. And so Elijah was afraid. The human part of him, he feared. And what did he do? So when he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom brush, sat down under it, and pray that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. So sometimes you find yourself, you want to give up. God has given you work. God has given you a responsibility. You know this is what you ought to do. You go and do it the right way. Instead of getting an applause, or uploads, what happens? You get threats. And sometimes you are afraid. Sometimes this is what keeps people even sometimes from doing God's work. We fear Satan. We fear the enemies. We fear this and that. We fear the counterattacks. But the Lord is telling us today, we need not to fear in the mighty name of Jesus. Because this walk, you're not walking alone. Hallelujah. You're not walking alone. But the beautiful thing is that always keep that conversation with our Lord. Because something amazing happened when he slept under the broom brush and he said even he wants his life to go, you know. Then um, at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there uh, by, uh, by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and jar, and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. So the angel of the Lord came back in verse 7 a second time and touched him, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up, ate, drank and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. So we can see a conversation with the Lord. And we are saying that Elijah is having some challenges even as he's doing ministry. But the most amazing thing, help is sent. For Jesus, he was sent an angel that strengthened him. So in this case, uh, Elijah is not being encouraged to die. Mm -mm. The Lord has not encouraged him to die. He has not encouraged, he had not even killed him and said, Ati, now you're becoming uh, now uh, uh, foolish. Now let me just take away life and raise another prophet. No, before he did that, Elijah needed to accomplish what he needed to accomplish. 
Are you there at the broom brush? Just still sleeping. And the angel of the Lord is telling you, arise and now move on. But you still don't want to stand up and eat. You don't want to wake up and eat. Or you wake up and eat and you continue sleeping. Some of us, we have agreed to the positions of comfort, to be in that comfort position where you just want, you have eaten. You wake up, you will pray, you will read the Bible, but you continue living that life. But it's the high time that we stood up and took the great commission at heart. We go spread the word of God in the marketplace. We go spread some love out there. We go pray with the sick. We go assist those who are calling us every day, our family members who need food, family members who are sick, family members who are not saved. Maybe you're the one who God has given the burden of praying for your whole family. Release yourself to God fully. Arise and eat. Eat the word of God. Spend time in prayer. You have a long way to go. Elijah had 40 days. He needed to walk for 40 days in the wilderness. Key note, key word is wilderness. There are times you will find yourself in a wilderness. There are times we want to be in a crowd. You want to be, you know, you're happy. You're with people. You're doing what everybody is doing. My sister, my brother, listen to me. There are days you are alone. I have found myself in the wilderness for many, many times. And people could not understand me. People could not understand what I'm doing there. People could not understand why I'm not able to do a few things or even extra. But you need to carry the burden the Lord has given you, the responsibility God has given you at heart. Take it to heart and, and allow Jesus to walk with you, give you strength. So he was strengthened. And he was able to move. And he, if you read ahead, he had an assignment that he needed even to anoint Elisha, his predecessor. Or the one who would succeed him. We want to tell Jesus that God today, we have carried these responsibilities for long. God has blessed you financially. But many other times you see people coming asking for money and you think they are lazy. They are not lazy. It's for a certain reason they are in that position and God has given you the, the wisdom on how even you can take them to the next level. Do it with all your heart and don't complain. Your family members, some of them have, have had bills. Right now we are having so many barriers. And you're feeling as if you're overwhelmed. But God, the Lord has provided you. He has given you life. That person is dead. You are alive. Why don't you just take the responsibility and embrace it and, and do it with love and joy so that your, the name of the Lord may be glorified. So Elijah is here and he has this responsibility. There are battles. You'll go through battles, but the Lord is saying, I shall be with you till the end of age. Now, the second part we want to look at is that, um, so we've seen God strengthens people. He sends the angels and there are days now he will even send people along your path. And we're looking at mentorship right now. We are looking at uh, two things. We look at the assistance of other people. And finally, we look at uh, how God brings even mentors along our path. Now, Moses held, uh, there was a battle at Rephidim uh, between the Israelites and the Amalekites. Moses told Joshua to choose some men so that um, they could go out and, and, and fight these people. And uh, what Moses said is that tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand so, um, so that you can continue fighting Joshua. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered and Moses and Aaron, um, uh, Moses had ordered, uh, Moses had, uh, had ordered, sorry, and then Moses Aaron and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses' hands were held up, the Israelites were winning. But whenever Moses lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. So this is very interesting. So Moses' hands grew tired. What did they do? Uh, this is 
Aaron and Hur, they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands one on the other side and on the other side uh, Hur did it. And so his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekites army with the sword. In this, we can see that um, Moses could not do it alone. He couldn't. He could not do it alone in Exodus 17. He couldn't. And sometimes we want to do things on our own. But God is saying, I'm bringing you uh, helpers. I'm bringing you help. Just accept the help. Moses could have just chosen to say, ah, no, I'm getting tired. Let me just sit. But God is going to bring destiny helpers. People who will assist you even to, um, to, to reach. Remember, we have the assignment that we need to accomplish. So we'll accomplish these assignments in, in the way that glorifies God, not using shortcuts, not doing other things that don't bring glory to and honor to God's name or, or bring glory to self. But we can see that God is bringing other people to Moses to hold his hands. He gave wisdom to Aaron and, and uh, Hur. And so even in your life, God is going to bring people to, to support you. You might be there. You may have lost your husband. You might be there. You need school fees. God is going to command people. He is going to burden other people to come and be a blessing to you. So that his name be glorified. The other part is Exodus 18. That is very interesting and very good for leadership. Those who are in leadership. Sometimes you are a leader and you're feeling you're all alone. You're the HR. You're in the company. You're the director. You're a pastor. You know, you are maybe even the, the, the head of state. You know, and sometimes you are in a position where you're thinking, oh, how will I do it? You are a mother. You are a father. And you're thinking, how will I do this? Or you're trying to do everything yourself. Sometimes that can be detrimental to your health, even to the project you're working on, to the assignment you're doing, to the ministry. Uh, you know, so many things. And so the Bible is very clear in Exodus 18 that a time is, um, that they were, they were in the wilderness. Moses decided to send back Zipporah and the children. And so when uh, back to, to their home, to their father-in-law, Jethro, remember the Bible reckons and says very clearly that Jethro was a, was a priest of Midian. And so when, when they were sent back, Moses, um, Jethro decided to come back and see what Moses uh, say hi to Moses or get to visit Moses. So something that really um, marveled Jethro was that when he woke up uh, in the morning after they had talked of how God had fought for them battles, kindly read Exodus 18 and a very interesting scripture. Um, and then um, in the morning, Moses just did what he needed to do or what he did every day. In verse 13, he says, the next day Moses took his seat to serve as a judge for the people. For the people, they stood around him from morning till evening. When his father-in-law uh, saw what Moses was doing for the people, he said, what is this that you are doing for the people? And, and, and we are still on that. Are there people who come to your life do you have you allowed yourself, you know, to have people who can come and ask you, how are you bringing up these children? How are you running the company? How are you doing this ministry? You know, people who can come in and, and, and be able to see something that you're not seeing. And I'll help you and assist you in seeing that. And then he says, why do you? alone sit as a judge while all these people stand around you from morning to evening. Verse 15, Moses says, because the people come to seek God's will. Whenever they have a dispute, it is brought to me. And I decided, I, I decide between the parties and inform them of God's will and instructions. What you are doing is not good. So Moses was justified. There are things that we do and can be justified. I am doing this like this and this. I am raising up my children like this because of this and that. You know, 
but there is always you what you see what is your will what you desire but there is the other bigger good you know that you're missing out there that other people can see and at this point is very it's very good to allow ourselves to have people who can speak to us to mentor us the bible talks about the older women walking with the younger women the question is will the younger women allow themselves to be uh, mentored by the older women as we also uh, look at the older women are they willing to walk with the younger but many at the times the older women want to share you know they want to show you they want to tell us that this path i walked and it wasn't good this is how i raised my children i need didn't work kindly use this godly way kindly pray for your family kindly pray for your business someone has been running companies others we, we've heard of successful people talking of how they've lost money how they have made mistakes listen allow yourself to be taught allow yourself to be guided allow yourself to be mentored because god will always bring along our path mentors so there are times is bringing angels uh, to come and, and 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 strengthen us you know angels to, to provide for us yeah the provision is there so there are times even in moses we have now people to just support us but there are times it is us to change to transform and to see how they the lord wants us to see and there are times yes in this case that he brings people to help us see what we are not seeing so what he told him is that what you are doing is not good jethro said you and these people who come to you on, will only wear yourselves out to work uh, wear yourselves out the work is too heavy for you you cannot handle it alone jethro then gives uh, gave that advice so jethro said that he will give him some advice so to told him i will give you some advice and may god be with you you must be the people's representative before god and bring the disputes to him so in this case one thing that i got jethro is telling remain being the vision bearer remain the representative of the people you know people will still bring their disputes however he tells them this that in verse 20 teach this decrees yeah they, they are saying that you are saying that i am the one who knows what the lord wants you know he says teach this decrees an instruction to them and show them the way they ought to live and how to behave number 21 it says select capable men so there is the teaching teach other people you cannot do something alone sometimes i know we have that part where you know you are the one who will do it the way it's it's ought you know the way you like it that excellence part sometimes you hear people making fun of the the ocd you know just want things to be done in a perfect uh, the, the perfection level in a perfect way but you told teach other people how you or how you have learned you teach them how to do it because some people don't do things badly because they don't want it's because they don't know how to do it if you don't teach me how to stitch i'll just stitch the way i know if you want a back stitch or uh, is uh, and you not shown me how to do a back stitch i will do a running stitch if that's what i know you know so select capable men also from the people who fear god trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain and appoint them as officials appoint them as judges over thousands and then they are judges over hundreds over 50s and tens have them serve as judges for the people at all times but have them bring every difficult case to you the simple case they can decide for themselves that will make your load lighter because they will share it with you and all these people will go home satisfied and and Moses listened to his father in law and did everything he said do not the lord is telling us today do not uh, overburden yourself you know look for people who are capable people who are trustworthy appoint them to be 
um, in charge. Even in our houses, let our children know that they can be in charge of something. You're in charge of cleaning the table. You're in charge of the house, uh, the cleanliness um, of, of, of you. You are the one who makes sure all the beds are made. Even in our companies, let's, let's learn to delegate. You can do everything. Don't micromanage, you know. Sometimes you are there, but you are not there. You want to see everything. Let people grow so that the burden can be lighter. Jesus, when Simon of Cyrene assisted him to carry the cross, didn't tell him, oh, don't carry it this way or don't carry it that way. The issue was, um, I'm walking, you come with the cross. However you carry it. So life is not about one man's show. God himself, the creator of the universe, is surrounded by an army that, uh, that, and that's how he runs his business. And if you are part of his kingdom, you need to embrace this kind of attitude. Now, in Philippians 2, 6, the Bible says, your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, as, as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. So there are things that we need to allow to die. We need to allow some things to die. Pride, fear, you know, thinking you're the only one who can do it the way it's, you know, the right way. We need to embrace the attitude of Christ, that he being the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God. Sometimes we want to be God. But you know the most interesting thing, even this God, he sends angels. We have angel Gabriel, we have angel Michael who fights our battles. Angel Gabriel is the messenger, you know. We thank God we have a whole army that brings worship in heaven, that is adoring God. He himself cannot worship himself. And so he has this vast army. And it is in the way we do things, the way we delegate, the wisdom that we apply, that we look back and see that everything we did was good. Jesus allowed his vulnerability to be experienced by the whole world by allowing Simon to assist him. Drop the pride and fear that hinders us from allowing uh, help along uh, our way so that the purposes of God can be achieved as they should. So if you are struggling with sin also, let's, let the Lord have it. You're struggling with smoking, drinking. You've tried it on your own. You cannot. Jesus is saying, it is for freedom that I came. Galatians 5.1, I came to set you free. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Allow God to set you free. And when he does that, you will be free indeed. One day our son, uh, Benaya, one day asked me that, uh, we were just driving along the way and he asked, what if we were the only ones in the world? We would eat all the hot dogs. We would have everything for ourselves. And I told him, you know, yes, you would have them, but who will make them? Why you enjoy them? It's because someone else has taken the initiative of making them. And so you go sit and partake of them. And even if you'll say you'll make all the hot dogs, will you make all the electricity? Will you? Who will do the internet? Will you? you cannot. The world, the way God had it first is that we are intertwined. We have to correlate with one another. And that brings it to that part where we need to live nicely with people, loving each other. You know, you cannot do ministry alone. The broken, the rebuilding broken walls ministry has even shown us that uh, Pastor Grace has gone to that path. He, she, she has applied that wisdom and she's bringing this on board that people need to come in, people with different gifts to come and support the ministry so that it can accomplish its purpose. Has she just a vision bearer? We need to come on board and support. When she calls upon us, or the Lord impresses in your heart that you need to support, just do it. 
Some people have said, I, 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 I don't need this, I don't need other people. We need each other. We need each other. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your love. We bless you and we worship your holy name. Thank you for reminding us that we cannot do it on our own. We release our hearts to you. We release our hearts to you. Where we have faltered by acting alone, being the superheroes, trying to pull a one-man show, Lord, we pray you forgive us. We thank you for the rebuilding broken walls ministries, all the walls that are broken. We pray the anointing that was upon Nehemiah shall be upon Pastor Grace and the ministry that is here. That all those people, as they rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem, as they were rebuilding the walls, as the burden was there for rebuilding the walls, may it be upon us, O God, that, Lord Almighty, your name be glorified, that your name be exalted, that your will be done. People will act as your will is, to the glory and honor of your holy name. We thank you and we worship your holy name. We exalt you for who you are. We love you and we adore you. And we pray for everyone who will listen to this message. May there be a transformation in their heart. May their burden be lighter, knowing that you are there, God, to offer direction as to how we should walk. We worship you, we worship you and adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. May God bless us. May God do you well. Amen. And God do you an amazing um time may you have an amazing time in his presence shalom